Hi and welcome to another tutorial from Humph. Today we're going to take a look at whiteboard animation, also known as doodling, and how to achieve this effect in Blender. Firstly, this tutorial contains three major elements to achieve this effect. The SVG path that will be drawn, the SVG path that the hand will follow, and the masks that will be used to cover the text. When designing these elements, you will need to perceive how the hand moves naturally when writing in script. Understanding how the hand translates across from one character to another will contribute significantly to the believability of the effect. Let's head over to Inkscape. I use two fonts, one for each word. For the whiteboard text, I use Musio Sans Bold. Once you have the font of choice applied, we've converted the text to a path and duplicated the path. Then I use the hatch path effect to fill in the interior. You will need to convert the text to a path and then separate the path into individual characters and apply the hatch effect to each character separately. If you want to know more about the hatch path effect in Inkscape, please reference this video here. Then you will need to change the outline text to a path. Once done, you should have something that looks like this. The hatch effect ignores the interior shapes, such as the inside of an A, so you will need to separate these, uh, those elements as you convert them to a path. Lastly, you will need to create an SVG path that the hand will follow. For the whiteboard type, we are going to be more loose with the path, whilst with the animation type, we are going to be more strict. This is where you will need to perceive the hand's natural motion and connect all paths for each character together. Make sure the paths are not too close together and that the corners are not too acute or sharp as this will cause calculation errors in the curves topology. Once done, you should have something that looks like this. Next, the animation text. First, the front used. I use Fable script, however I did a lot of modifications to it as I wasn't happy with how loose the type was for this project. The X height of some of the characters was too low and the A descender was also too low for my taste. However, this handwriting font was ideal because it is a mono line thickness font and I advise using this type of script font when using whiteboard animation as it saves you a lot of potential hassle and it looks a lot more natural. Using the Bezier tool, draw a single line that runs through all the characters, then draw a line through the characters that mirrors or that mirrors how the line will be drawn with the hand. You will need to make a rim mask for the animation text. To do this, duplicate the animation text twice, making sure all characters are combined. Then use the tool dynamic offset on one of the duplicates. Use the top square handle to draw out the dynamic offset of the duplicate. And then with the second duplicate selected, subtract that duplicate from the dynamic offset duplicate. And you'll be left with a rim. And we're going to use that rim to import as the rim animation text mask. Cool. With this done, we can move on to the layout. First, I imported the lines I created in Inkscape earlier. Then I renamed the curves to appropriate names in Blender using F2. For the animation text, I called it animation text. For the animation curve hand, uh, curve for the hand to follow, I called it animation curve hand. For the whiteboard text, I called it whiteboard text. For the whiteboard curve um, for the hand to follow, I called it whiteboard curve hand. For the animation text mask, the rim mask that is, I called it mask animation and for the whiteboard text mask I called it mask whiteboard. Um, in addition to these I created a hand in Inkscape and imported it as a grease pencil SVG object. I'll show you why I use grease pencil later but this is where you can add a real hand as is commonly used in whiteboard animation. I just chose to use a grease pencil SVG import right, for this tutorial. Each character of the animation text will be animated separately, so you will need to name 
each its own name. Once I, once I named them, I parented all the letters to the animation ring mask and placed them in their own collection. Now we're going to move on to the driver setup. Next we're going to set up a driver for the animation text. Firstly, we're going to create a small box with control and A and then we'll scale it down. Next, we're going to select the box and the animation curve hand and press Alt P and parent the box to the animation curve hand using the relationship follow path. Once done, the box will follow the path animation evolution time. This property comes pre-animated at 100 frames. However, we don't want this property be, to be pre-animated, we want it to be controlled by the cap of the path. To do this, we will need a driver. First, let's add some thickness to our path so that we can see it better. Then, let's remove the keyframes from our evolution time. We can do this by right-clicking on the evolution time and selecting clear keyframes. Next, right click on the property again and select add driver. Once you do so, you'll see a dialog box open. At the bottom of that dialog box, you'll see an option that says show in drivers editor. Select that option and the previous dialog box will close and a new one will open. In this new dialog box, you want to look for the X that's in brackets and you want to press that. Once you press that, you'll have some options come up. You want to change the option to single property. Under the prop option, that's the P-R-O-P, change the option to curve and select the animation curve hand. Uh, that's the animation curve hand that we named and imported. The property uses the curve name instead of the object name. So you will need to search for this name in the um, file menu to the top right. Once done, right click on the end cap and select copy data path. Then paste that into the path option highlighted in red in your driver dialog box. This will activate the driver and now the box will animate along the path as the end cap is animated. Then in the same driver box, we want to look for the expression input area. In that area, we're going to see var, that's the VAR, and we want to multiply the var by 100. So we're going to put VAR star sign 100. And the reason we're multiplying it by 100, because the path animation is evolving through its animation by 100 frames. And the 100 frames is above the evolution path evolution um, box. And if we change it from 100 to any other number, we'd have to multiply it by that number instead. Once we do this, this will cause the box to move along with the end cap motion. You'll notice that the box and the end cap start and end together, but they don't exactly line up in the center of the animation. This is because the path animation calculates its interpolation based on the number of curve points it has to pass through. The more curve points, the slower the animation. The less curve points, the faster the animation. So characters like L that has fewer curve points than say C will move faster and C will move slower, right? where the box won't be able to pick up that interpolated data. With the curve selected, you want to tick clamp and you want to untick follow. So if you go into the curve options on the path animation, you'll see clamp and follow. Clamp is to stop the box from moving past the starting and ending points of the curve and follow is so that the box does not rotate with the curve. The reveal for the animation text come from the animation of each character stroke. However, we need to frame the or encase the font so that the shape is maintained as it was in the original text. And that's where our text animation mask comes in. Next, we're gonna place that mask over the text and adjust the curve nodes. So use Alt S to scale 
individual curved nodes up and down to fill the mask. Okay. To achieve the best results, this will take some adjustment. So be patient with yourself and go over each character and make sure there's no gaps or that the um, angles of, of the curve aren't too acute, that you get topology um, inconsistencies. To complete the mask, all we have to do now is link the animation text mask, the rib mask, to our background. To do that, we just use Control and A L, and then we select materials. Right, that way the mask is complete. And now we can move on to the whiteboard text. In whiteboard animation, you have situations where the whiteboard reveal is more loose um, and not strictly attached to every single curve it's revealing. Right? So in this instance for the whiteboard text, we're gonna be more loose like that and less um, strict as we were with the animation text where every single stroke was followed. So we just want the text reveal to look real enough. Right? So we won't be using a driver for this instance. However, you can if you want to. Firstly, we're gonna create a box similar to the animation text and reduce the scale. We're gonna call this box um, whiteboard or WB control and parent it to the path whiteboard curve hand using the follow path relationship. Then we're gonna reposition the box to the beginning of the curve. Then go to the curve options and enlarge the curve using the depth option. When adding depth to SVG curves, you will need to use smaller values for the depth than normal. Place the whiteboard text under the whiteboard curve hand text, then change the depth so that it covers the entirety of the text underneath it. Then, using Ctrl and L, link the material of the whiteboard text curve hand to the material of the background. Then you have a text real mask. When covering the text with the whiteboard curve hand, Try to make sure that it just covers the text. Not too much, right? but not too little that some of the text is revealed. On to the final animation. First, let's duplicate the hand. Then let's parent one hand to the cube control that's created for the animation text and parent the other hand to the cube control that's created for the whiteboard text. Right. This is the advantage of creating a cube control instead of parenting the hand directly to the curve. If at a later date you want to change the hand, maybe to have it look different, you can simply just detach that hand and parent a new hand to it. Now we can animate the whiteboard text and you simply just animate the whiteboard curve hand um, end cap. Once you animate the text, the hand will follow and um, the reveal will show. For the animation text, we have already done the driver. So all we need to do now is animate the individual strokes for each of the characters. The total animation time of the animation for each stroke that's from A to N for animation or for whatever text you're doing, needs to match the path evolution time of the curve. In our case, it's 100 frames, but it may be different for you. Irrespective, the path evolution frames needs to be the same as the total length of the animation of your text. Remember, as you animate your individual strokes, that the animation used for the each stroke will be Bezier by default. So you may need to change that to linear or to modify it a bit so that it matches with the hands animation. To switch between the hands, simply use Grease Pencil's keyframes to appear the second hand as the animation of the first hand is over. This is why it was good to use Grease Pencil. And this is the end of the whiteboard animation tutorial. The power of this tutorial lies in the fact that the driver control of the end cap enables you to import any SVG line art into Blender and to apply the whiteboard animation. The end cap is powerful and it's easy to use 
and it utilizes SVG import really well. So you can basically import any SVG uh, import with this method and apply the whiteboard animation and yeah it becomes viable at that point. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial right? and if you did like it give it a thumbs up. If there's something that you think you could have done better you can always leave that in the comments. We're all happy to learn and we're grateful for your contribution. So until I see you again with another tutorial, get up and design a new door.